This video will show how you can go from a discolored distal incisal restoration to a prepared tooth to a nearly finished restoration that will save you five to ten minutes of chair time. Hard to believe? Just watch. And replace a distal incisal edge on tooth number eight by using the clear custom matrix technique. This technique can be used for any type of composite or any class of composites. In this case, we'll just do a class four. Other videotapes on YouTube will show class ones, twos, and fives. The first step in using the custom matrix technique is after anesthetizing the patient, we're going to take an impression of this tooth with a clear bite registration material. Because this tooth has a contact with the adjacent lateral incisor, we're going to place a mylar strip between these teeth so that uh, there will be a smooth contact when the final composite is placed. We're going to place a mylar strip between the two teeth and then we're going to wedge this and in this case because the interproximal papilla is missing and we have a large distal surface for this restoration, we're going to support the mylar strip with a large wedge. This happens to be a stimudent. And now we're going to take an impression of this surface of the tooth with a clear bite registration material. I'm touching the tooth. As I inject, I'm getting the embrasure between the mylar strip and the tooth. The tip of, of this uh, intraoral syringe tip is touching the tooth as we inject material. And we're now going to let this set up. In the mouth, it's going to take 45 seconds to a minute to set up. Outside of the mouth, it's going to take longer. So we're going to wait now for a minute or so for this to set up. A custom matrix for this incisal edge of tooth number eight has been is completely set now. The wedge easily comes out. This is an impression, so this comes off like any other impression material. And we'll take the mylar strip out. And this is what this looks like. We now have a very accurate impression of this tooth except for the area where we couldn't easily get clear bite registration material, which is around the contact, so you'll see a space there. We're now going to use this later on in the procedure to form the last layer of composite for our class 4 restoration. We have now removed the discolored distal incisal restoration and we're going to restore this with dentin enamel and incisal shaded composite using a clear custom matrix technique that we demonstrated previously. We have a clear matrix that we're going to use to reform the original shape of the tooth. To do the dentin shade, we're going to take and take a unit of use material and inject it into the mechanical retention that we've created on this plastic tooth. If it were natural we wouldn't need to do this but these are teeth that we use in my workshop and we need to have mechanical retention for the composite to stick to the tooth. So we're going to inject some dentin shade into the retention So we've now shaped this such that we have dentin shaded composite where the dentin would be. We don't want to have any undercuts at the cervical because that would be difficult for composite to get in there. So we've now shaped this. We've kept this, we've shaped this now, kept it away from the labial and lingual surfaces. We have our dentin shade there. We're now going to cure this as we normally would.
We're now going to put back the mylar strip and the wedge that we used when we actually constructed the clear custom matrix. Put in the mylar strip and a wedge. A large wedge is needed in this situation since we have a large interdental papilla area that will not support the mylar strip and when we seat the custom matrix may force the mylar strip away from the tooth. So we are now currently going to wedge that as you can see right here. We're now going to take a clear custom matrix that we made previously and this flat surface that I'm showing you is a surface that abuts to the mylar strip. And the area that is open on this clear custom matrix is where the mylar strip will form the composite where the clear custom matrix could not go. That would be where a contact would have been with the adjacent tooth. We're now going to place some incisal shade into the clear matrix taking a unit of use tip and injecting a little bit of incisal shade and you probably don't want a lot in here and it's probably going to be difficult for you to see we're actually going to condense this into the incisal edge of this tooth and also into the labial and lingual surfaces. If you look in here you'll see some incisal shade injected into the clear custom matrix. We're now going to take enamel shade and inject that into the custom matrix and condense that. And we'll also, while we condense this, make room for the dentin shade that was already placed into the tooth and light cured. Because it's going to be hard to carry composite all the way down into this area with the clear custom matrix. So we'll shape that so I'll show you I've already just condensed some enamel shade around the dentin shade we're now going to take clear custom matrix that has incisal shade and enamel shade. Place it back on the tooth. It fits like a glove and then put pressure on this. For about five pounds of pressure for five to ten seconds. This forces the composite into the shape of the custom matrix. So we're going to cure this from the labial, incisal, and lingual surfaces through the custom matrix forming the exact surface of that tooth prior to operating on it. 
but without an air inhibited layer. The proof of the pudding is right now. We can take out the wedge and the mylar strip, take this off, and now we can look at our clear our composite that we formed on this tooth. Now notice we have a little flash at the cervical. This is very thin and can easily be, be taken off. But in essence, look at the rest of our surface. There might be a little bit of flash here and the incisal edge. Imagine light curing, and after light curing, your composite looks like this. Your shaping and finishing time is going to be greatly reduced. Let's take a look at the lingual surface. Take a look at the lingual surface. I'm not sure that you can see it, but I can here, that there is a variation in color from cervical to incisal. It gets lighter towards the incisal edge. Obviously, this would be dependent upon the tooth itself, so you're obviously looking at tooth when you add composite of an incisal shade to this tooth. So we put in the amount of incisal shade that we felt we needed we shape the dentin shade to the area that we wanted it. And then the rest of it was filled in with enamel shade. Now there'll be some finishing, but your finishing and polishing is going to be greatly reduced because your shape of your surface, your anatomy, is very similar to the original anatomy of the tooth. This surface is hard and smooth and needs minimal polishing and shaping. I'm going to try to get this a little bit closer to you.